Hello hey YouTube, this is Bruno. In a recent video I showcased my factory, but left one rather important part out, which is the ingredient supply. So let's talk about that today. But to refresh your memory, this is the factory, which is on the surface just a regular sorting system with an input and a shocker box and order and three rows. But the lowest row contains auto-crafted items, which are my redstone supplies. This means I have a fully automated process to keep the lowest row fully stocked. And without going into details, and you should watch my linked video if you are interested in the details, essentially I have one crafter for each chest. All of the crafters are kept fully stocked, so they can craft whatever they need to craft. And I have a signaling system here that basically means that these crafters will be powered once every four seconds if the corresponding chest is not completely full. There are a few more details. So on one side we have a safe card system. Essentially if one of the slots could run out of items so we might lose the recipe then the crafting is blocked. And on the other side we have some magic to request the ingredients. So basically, I read this hopper here on top and if I'm losing too many items, then this piston will be retracted, which will activate a clock here at the bottom and this will in a magical way relay the information that I need, in this case, gunpowder. We'll take a look at how this works. So this video is for you if you want to build a variant of this factory or if you are simply looking for inspiration to build something different. Now for the ingredient request system you can't use really something minecart based in my opinion because I want all of these crafters to fire in parallel. I want to be able to craft 25 or 40 or 60 items in parallel depending on how wide I built this. So I really needed a system where pretty much all of the crafters can request their ingredients at the same time. And this is my attempt at solving that. And in my opinion it works really nicely. There are some bottlenecks as discussed for ingredients that are required by many crafters. But basically, if you empty all of these chests or build the system new, in maybe three or four hours, everything will be crafted. In fact, most of the chests will be filled in about 90 minutes. A lot of stuff needs cobble, all these pistons, the observers, these dispensers and these droppers might take a bit longer. For quite a while, the pistons and the observers will end up with the cobble, but that's fine. In my survival world, I chunk load the whole thing. I don't have to be around for the crafting process, so I don't really care if it takes one hour or four hours. When I return for the next time, all of these chests will be full. And there are three parts to that. On one side we have very simple ingredients, like gunpowder or cobble, that we basically just have to unload. And we have the crafted ingredients. So for example, we craft redstone blocks to redstone dust, iron blocks to iron ingots, and we have the complex ingredients. For example, we need to craft droppers if we want to craft auto crafters, or we need to craft redstone torches in order to craft repeaters and comparators. Let's hop into creative and have a look how this works. So the first, let's look at the principle. We have a cyclical water stream running around like so, going all this way back here. And all the ingredients will end up in a water stream. And each ingredient, at least the easy ones, has a one white tileable component that makes sure that the items end up in a water stream. Now let's once again take the TNT crafter and take out a bit of gunpowder. Now what happens is that we activate a clock here and this clock will trigger observers and the observers relay a signal to other observers and these basically activate these two slices which are sand and gunpowder because of course we don't know which ingredient is low we don't know if we need sand or if we need gunpowder so we'll just put both in the water stream and at some point this crafter will be filled again so it will need no more gunpowder and at this time the ingredients will arrive back here. And here we have item filters, picking up the ingredients and sorting them back. So let's have a look at one of the slices. 
and this would be a bamboo slice. So whenever we get the signal that we need bamboo, we get a clock here. But for reasons I'll go into later, I also use a flip-flop here. So the flip-flop will switch state. So we have an item in here and this will activate a second clock. And this clock is just a bit slower than hopper speed. It's a 12 game tick clock. And this clock will put the items here into the water stream. So how does this work? We have a shulker box unloader here that unloads the bamboo into a dropper. And then we go have the item filter and then we go into a second dropper. And the thing is that we will lock this hopper whenever anything is in here. If say this dropper is empty, first we would fill up this dropper, then we would fill up this hopper. As soon as the items back up to this dropper, we lock this hopper here via this contraption. So this hopper is locked and this means that we will have always have room in this dropper for items that come in via the item filter. So if now we get ingredients back from the water stream, these items will be filtered and will be put in this dropper and will continue to fill up this. Now what also happens if we get items in the item filter here that we will get a signal state here and this resets the flip-flop. So whenever the signal state changes here, this flip-flop is reset to don't put item in the water stream. So essentially, if any of the crafters requests bamboo, bamboo goes into the water stream. As soon as bamboo is returned, we will stop putting bamboo in the water stream. We will supply new bamboo whenever this drop is empty. Using a clock that is a bit slower than hopper speed also makes sure that we will always be able to pick up all of the items here on top and we will never get an endless cycle, which could happen if we use hopper speed. So that's cool for the simple ingredients. And I have arranged all of them on one side here. So this is one white tileable. And on the other side, I have the ingredients that need some crafting. Here we craft redstone to redstone dust. Now the principle at the bottom is exactly the same. So here we have this dropper and essentially all of the items that come from the filter will go in here. So we will always have room. If this dropper contains anything then we will block this hopper here, meaning we can't get any new redstone. And on top of that we have an autocrafter set up and this autocrafter just reads this dropper here. So if this dropper becomes empty, we will run this clock for a very short time until we have new items. If they go out because we need them, we will craft more. So this is just a very simple autocrafter setup that decompresses the redstone blocks. And we have again a shulker box unloader on top here. So here we have a few very simple crafters. Here we process a bit more complex stuff. So here we have all of the wood and I simply use one wood type, in this case birch, because I have a ton of birch. And birch will first be crafted to planks and then I will fill up this chest here. And then I will craft the planks to the different ingredients, which are also slabs, crafting tables and chests. Chests for shulker boxes, crafting tables for crafters and planks for composters. So here is a little custom system. I distribute the planks over two double chests. So this will go into all four rows. And here we will just have the planks themselves. And then we have crafters with the correct recipe and triggered in a way that they will only craft if all of the items are filled in. But at the core, we have the same system that keeps the ingredients cycling. So the ingredients are requested here. And again, we will always be able to filter them back into the system and we will have new items coming in if we need them. And here I put in just a very simple alert system. So if any of the ingredients is missing, that means if the input chest for the shulker boxes is empty, then this redstone torch will be activated and we will get a flashing signal here. Now let's use that for one of the unused slices and I see the lamp blinking. So I know I have to check my ingredients the same as on the other side. So what about the complex ingredients? For example, we need to craft pistons in order to auto-craft sticky pistons. Now, 
put a pin in that, we'll return to that later. I'd like to first describe the system how I sent the signal to the ingredient stations. And remember that if any of the ingredients for this item are missing, I will activate this observer clock. And the easiest way to handle this, and I would do this if I would build a factory again, is to have a double layer system. So basically in the middle we have the signal transmission. So let's, for example, say we need the ingredients for sticky pistons. Okay, then we have one rail that we will power all of the way until here. And then we have two ways we can go. We can ha have observers on the top and we can have observers at the bottom. So let's for example say that our slime balls are over there. On the top we go from left to right and at the bottom we go from right to left. So for example if this slice would provide the slime balls then we would need to relay the clock here. So we just find the slice that belongs to the slime. We find the slice that goes here and then we just knock out this glass here, put an observer in here, add the rail here and now we have to relate the clock to this point. Let's say we need sand and sand is maybe supplied here. Then we would once again have an observer looking downwards, close the rail and we get a signal here. Unfortunately, I realized this two-layer concept only after I've built the factory. So what I did in my initial design was to have everything on one layer and to go both to the left and to the right, everything at the bottom, which made it really difficult. And I had to leave slices empty. And it's like the yellow ingredients are on this side and the green ones are on this side. Now this works as well but you are less flexible and you may end up with empty slices. But this system is actually much more flexible if you want to later add new ingredients. So you of course can build this a lot larger. This is all one white tileable or at the bottom here it's four white tileable. So you can always put in four more. All right, what about the complex ingredients like the pistons and the droppers? Well, they have crafters of their own and they function with exact, exactly the same system. So we have a crafter here that crafts bows, for example. And then we have a crafter that crafts dispensers. And the bows go directly into this crafter. So to craft, we have to strongly power this dispenser crafter. So this will craft first, we will have an empty slot. Then this crafter is powered, it crafts a bow and the bow is immediately placed in the one slot that is empty. And what happens on this side is that we once again have a container that we'll try to fill up and we read a container on top. So if any dropper is in here, then this will be enabled and we will block the crafting. But as long as we don't have any objects in here, we will have a clock on this side that will also try to craft one dispenser every four seconds. And on this side, we just request the ingredients for everything. For for a dispenser we would request everything, which would be sticks, string, redstone dust and cobble. And as soon as we run low on cobble, the system stops. Now how do we get the items over here? You see the dispenser is a special case. This is the only item that I can't craft in a one white tileable way, because we need to craft the bows first. So for the dispensers I just use an item filter. So I will grab them from a water stream because dispensers are no ingredients and they go into this water stream here and into the storage. Now all of the other ingredients have a regular request system at the bottom. So this is very, very much the same request system as for the normal ingredients, including the filtering back of the items. If anything is in here, we will stop crafting. If we need pistons, we will request them here and they will go into this water stream and we will start crafting and we will request the ingredients for the pistons. So this is a very flexible system and you could of course put these complex crafting stations at any spot. They don't have to be here opposite of our main module, but of course you somehow need to relay the information. So basically you could extend this double layer request system to the left and to the right and have the complex ingredients on the side if you like.
So this would be completely the same system. Now, there's a snack we need to talk about. These observers, if they are fired in just the wrong sequence, then we will permanently power a rail. So it could be that we need ingredients for these two items. And they could, for example, say both of them need redstone. Perhaps droppers on one side and pistons on the other side. And due to some delay in processing, because we have to relay the signals using observers, these signals are shifted to each other. So let's slow down. So you see that they are always alternately powered. And this means that the rail here on top is constantly powered. So it doesn't switch at all. And this of course means that if we get this signal here, we no longer have a pulsing signal for our ingredient request section. Now the chance of that happening uh, are not very high because all of these clocks are synchronized, but it can happen. And the flip-flops, or more precisely the RS latches here, will stabilize this a bit. Because at some point the ingredient request will be turned on and then we will move the item over so this supply station is in a state that we need redstone until redstone arrives here. So in theory all of these crafters should be full but unfortunately this is not 100% reliable either. So I needed a fix for that and I'm afraid my fix is not very lag friendly because what I did here was for the lines where this can happen, I just used redstone dust. Now you couldn't use this next to each other because then the redstone dust would bleed over, but we can have redstone dust between two rails. And in this case, I will just power a clock here so that I'll still have a clock here on the other side. Redstone dust is of course ter terribly laggy, especially if it's pulsing very quickly. So if you have a better idea how to solve this, please let me know. But basically what I did, after connecting all of the ingredients, I would empty all of the chests, or if you build this in survival, then of course all of the chests will be empty at the start. And then you will see where the signals are not synchronized. And you will see the lines that are constantly powered, and there are not a lot. I think in my survival world I have one more. For the whole factory you, you might end up with two or three lines where you need to use this redstone dust solution. So if you see that ingredients are requested but some rails here are powered constantly, just use the redstone dust solution. So you see, it's still a bit of a work in progress. I have ideas how to improve this and perhaps one day I'll make a version 2 of the factory that smooths out the rough edges. But this factory as it is works like a charm on my survival server and I think it's finally time to do the terraforming and to close this off because I also want to have a very small visible user interface, but it's truly been months since I've ever crafted some of this stuff. And for the, those objects where I know I need a ton, for example, if I do slime stone, I will need a lot of observers. I can just take out the shulker box. And if I don't need it immediately, I can put in the shulker box here and put a fresh shulker box in here. So this will be filled. And once I'm finished with the project, I can just throw my ingredients in here. Or also if I come back with a shulker box full of redstone stuff, I can throw in the shulker box and it will be unloaded and distributed here. Now, are there more possible improvements? Of course. You see, cobble is still a bottleneck despite having two cobble unloaders. So what you could do is to rig a cobble generator and just generate the cobble instead of unloading it. And you could do the same for the wood. You could, for example, use a fully automated azalea farm that can be chunk loaded to create your wood. But you know, you always have to keep some improvements for the next iteration, so that's fine. I'm really, really happy with this factory, how it turns out and how stable it has been. So thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.